And she just said something's wrong. And part of me knew, part of me knew right away. It's actually car fentanyl. The opioid crisis is an emergency. It's a national emergency. America is facing an opioid crisis. China has been pointed out as one of the main sources of illegal opioids. In 2019, China, alarmed by the potential threat from the wide-scale abuse of fentanyl, went one step further and introduced the regulations governing a wide range of fentanyl-related substances. Although in the United States, fentanyl analogues have been classified as controlled substances, the measure is only temporary. The current opioid crisis is the worst drug crisis America has seen. States like Ohio have one of the highest opioid-linked overdose death rates. In 2018, for the documentary Overdose, CGTM met with one drug user to find out more about this issue. So what do you call this place? We call it Tent City. Tent City. For months, this is where 26-year-old Steve Linville has called home. He's been in and out of rehab clinics, the county jail, and now he's living under a highway in Lower Cincinnati. What's your drug of choice? Uh, uh, heroin. Heroin is my number one. But uh, crack cocaine, it, it, sometimes it's up there. But heroin is a need. Um, crack cocaine is a want. There's some crack, and, and there's, there's some heroin, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, this, this is crack? Yeah, it's crack. This is heroin right here? Yep. So is there fentanyl in this hit right here? Uh, yep. You know for a fact? 1,000% there's fentanyl in it. It's actually car fentanyl. That's car fentanyl? That's car fentanyl. Steve has been addicted for many years, and heroin alone is no longer enough. It needs to be boosted with another drug for him to feel satisfied. That drug is carfentanil, a variant of fentanyl, a synthetic opioid, a man-made drug created in a lab. It was developed in 1963 in Belgium as a pain reliever designed to be chemically similar to plant-based drugs like morphine or heroin. But the big difference is it's 80 to 100 times stronger. Some variants of fentanyl, like carfentanyl, are so potent that just 2 to 3 milligrams, the size of a few grains of salt, can kill. As a result, drug abusers seldom take it pure. Instead, drug dealers mix small doses of fentanyl with other drugs like heroin to increase the user's high. We realized that people were buying on the street what they thought was heroin, and they were getting fentanyl. And fentanyl being 100 times more potent than is that much more lethal. Hey, Marty. Hey, John. Good morning. Good morning. Lakshmi Samanko is the coroner for Hamilton County. Where is the fentanyl and carfentanil coming from? There are patents on some of this stuff, but the fentanyl, how to make fentanyl, that information is out there. You know, and if you're a good chemist, you can pull up one of these recipes and make it. The abuse of this new drug is an emerging challenge faced by the world. America in particular is bogged down by this crisis. Synthetic opioids are now the number one cause of overdose death in America. According to the CDC, in 2017, deaths from a drug overdose in the U.S. hit a record high of 70,237, with 68% of those deaths involving synthetic opioids like fentanyl. 
Dr. Andrew Kolodny is an expert on the opioid crisis in the U.S. He's also the executive director of Physicians for Responsible Opioid Prescribing, an organization focused on reducing the impact of the overprescription of opioids. Every year, for more than 20 years, we've set a record for death from opioid overdose in the U.S., and then the next year we break that record. It just has kept getting worse. Since the 1990s, the United States has been battling addiction to prescription opioids and heroin. Drugs killed as many people as car accidents and gun violence did in the country. The opioid crisis is an emergency, and I'm saying officially right now, it is an emergency. It's a national emergency. In an intelligence report, the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration stated that China remains the primary source of fentanyl and fentanyl-related substances trafficked through international mail, as well as the main source for all fentanyl-related substances trafficked into the United States. This view is maintained by many U.S. media reports. However, it's not the case. Fentanyl是全国的这种分摊类物质的消耗量有多少？全国的这种分摊类物质的消耗量有多少？你们掌握的从中国区的分摊类物质有多少？这些问题，美国同行是没有办法回答的。他们在没有任何依据的情况下，
But there was one group who would know what to do, the experts at National Narcotics Laboratory based in Beijing. Fentanyl is on their radar, but it only surfaced in recent years. Hua Zhendong, an expert from the National Narcotics Laboratory, flew in specially from Beijing to assist with the investigation. It took a concerted effort to take down this illegal drug trafficking ring. Over 20 suspects were captured or investigated. One factory and two sales networks were destroyed. A total of 11.9 kilograms of fentanyl was seized, the largest haul of illegal fentanyl ever in China. And in the US, authorities also made progress with leads provided by their Chinese counterparts. In 2016, a Montgomery County deputy sheriff named David Landis started working for a fentanyl supplier in China, receiving the drug illicitly via the United States Postal Service. In less than a year, he mailed 2,900 packages of controlled substances to customers across the United States and in other countries. Some of his customers overdosed on the drugs he sent and died. Landis was eventually arrested in 2017. Found guilty of participating in a global drug trafficking conspiracy, he was sentenced to 15 years in prison, three years of supervised release, and a fine of 6,300 US dollars. To date in China, no cases of the wild-scale abuse of fentanyl have ever been uncovered. But in America, it's a different story. The overprescription of medical opioids is exactly where its opioid addiction started. The reason we saw this enormous increase in addiction and overdose deaths is because about 25 years ago, a campaign was launched in the U.S. to change the way the medical community thought about prescription opioids. This multifaceted campaign, which resulted in doctors hearing from many different directions that we haven't prescribed enough opioids, that patients are suffering needlessly, that opioids are a gift from Mother Nature, and that real addiction to opioids is very rare, so that we should prescribe more. That was the campaign that changed prescribing practices. It was marketing and advertising disguised as education and advocacy. And behind all of this was a desire for profits by, by pharmaceutical companies. And that's why one of the biggest battles in this opioid crisis is America versus Big Pharma. A report by US-based think tank RAND confirmed that the origins of this crisis were seeded not only by existing opioid use, but also by decades of oversupply of prescription opioid pain medications starting in the mid-1990s. The report went on to state that the bigger risk came from opioids being prescribed to treat chronic, non-cancer-related pain for long periods. Over the past few years, various states filed lawsuits against the pharmaceutical companies like Johnson & Johnson and Purdue Pharma. These companies are accused of fueling the opioid crisis in various states by underplaying the addictive risk of opioid painkillers and promoting their benefits. Today, Judge Bachman has affirmed our position that Johnson & Johnson, motivated by greed and avarice, is responsible for the opioid epidemic in our state. In mid-2021, three of America's biggest drug distributors and drug maker Johnson & Johnson settled for a landmark 26 billion US dollars with various states. 
It was also revealed that Purdue Pharma, the maker of OxyContin, one of the most widely abused prescription narcotics in the US, sold their opioids to healthcare providers despite knowing that they were diverting the drugs to abusers. They paid two doctors to prescribe more of their painkillers. For 10 years, they found ways to fraudulently increase the amount of products they were legally allowed to sell. In the end, Purdue Pharma was slapped with one of the largest penalties imposed on the manufacturer, $8 billion, and was forced to shut down. But there is still a lot of work for America to do in dealing with fentanyl. All variants of fentanyl are banned in the United States, but the ban is currently only temporary and can expire unless the order is extended or made permanent. It seems like the ban has little effect on the opioid crisis. Statistics also show that the United States accounts for 80% of the world's opioid use even though it's home to just 5% of the world's population. Information about the dangers of drugs and treatment of drug addicts are also not keeping up with the severity of the situation. And she just said something's wrong. And part of me knew, part of me knew right away. I got over there as fast as I could and I went in and I found her, <sighs> my baby. <laughs> Dorothy Shoemake and her husband raised five children in a stable and loving home. Unfortunately, her daughter became one of the thousands of drug overdose deaths in America. I do think that the, there's much more the United States government could be doing to reduce these deaths. We could prevent opioid addiction in the United States if we see that opioids are prescribed more cautiously. But for the millions of Americans who are already addicted, we have to see that they have better access to treatment. On how the U.S. needs to tackle the drug issue, Ethan Naderman, an expert on drug policy and founder of Drug Policy Alliance, has said in his podcast that trying to focus on the supply side is essentially a fool's errand because so long there's demand, there will be a supply. And when it comes to precursors, Underground chemists can be incredibly resourceful in identifying alternative chemicals and coming up with alternative ways of making these drugs. When it comes to preventing drug abuse, the US authorities have to act early. While fentanyl is widely abused in the US, its original purpose, used in a safe and legal medical setting, was to reduce suffering to alleviate the pain of cancer patients who no longer felt relieved by morphine or heroin safely administered through a slow-release transdermal patch. Like other narcotic prescriptions, it's tightly controlled in hospitals in China. In order to get a new batch of transdermal patches, this patient has to bring her ID and Medicare card and also return her used patches to the narcotics dispensary. This prevents unused patches from going into the wrong hands. Each prescription is registered separately and kept in a safe which can only be opened when two pharmacists are present. In China, the manufacturing and sale of medical fentanyl is highly regulated. In recent years, China's total annual production of fentanyl is around 60 kilograms. One of the top five makers of fentanyl in China is Yichang Humanwell Pharmaceutical. It operates under strict supervision. Local policemen even inspect the factory regularly to ensure the manufacturing rules are abided by. The 
用于医用的这样的一个用途，用来治病，用来救人。The amount of fentanyl each pharmaceutical company can produce is fixed. Every year, they have to submit a new request stating the amount they'd like to produce for the next year, depending on the demand. 是严格按照整个临床需求的这样的一个要求来去做计划管控的，绝对不容许这个生产企业呃超计划的去生产。Mike Vigil was responsible for some of the Drug Enforcement Agency's most significant international operations. Besides taking on big corporations, he believes the government can also mobilize ordinary people in this war against the drugs. Well, the Chinese government has established a very strong strategy that deals with rehabilitation, with drug treatment, with legislation and law enforcement, and then they have what they call. You know the the、uh, people's war against drugs. Since 2017, China has cracked 397,000 drug-related criminal cases, of which less than 10 were linked to fentanyl. 511,000 criminal suspects were arrested, and 278 tons of drugs were seized. In the People's War Against the Drugs, customs workers are at the front line. The city of Guangzhou is one of the busiest ports in the world, and many international packages get sent in and out of China via this city. The customs have introduced more effective measures and improved the technology to help cut off channels for drugs to be transported through mail. Guangzhou's police are also relying on people on the ground. To help break up the illegal drug trade. At this package delivery and pickup station in Guangzhou's Baiyun district, couriers are required to alert the police in the event that they found something suspicious. Usually, we will first ask the customer to show his driver's license, then we will check for a package, then we will check for the package. If it is some very small things, we will still use the scanner, then check, then check for the package, then check for the package. Because the color of the packaging is different. If it is recognized as a problem, we will immediately call the police. Using an app called Yundi An, the courier can alert the police directly. Baiyun District is China's busiest logistics and delivery hub, handling over two billion packages every year, and drugs could be hidden among them. In order to intercept these drugs, authorities would need more eyes on the ground. Baiyun has more than 200 policemen and auxiliary police officers, but there are almost 50,000 couriers plying the roads and handling packages every day. That's why they have been roped in. Since 2016, the police have issued a total of 200,000 U.S. dollars in rewards to buying couriers for providing tips that help to crack the drug-related cases, with two of them receiving up to 46,000 U.S. dollars each. One challenge in clamping down on fentanyl is that criminals can tweak the chemical composition of the drug to create new variants that are not yet on the radar of authorities and not yet restricted. In 2013, 13 types of fentanyl substances were already regulated in China, but from 2015, the Chinese government has been increasing the number of banned fentanyl substances. Six new ones were added in 2015, four in 2017, and two fentanyl precursors in 2018. All done before the United Nations announced its recommendation to restrict those substances. Since 2018, the United States temporarily classified fentanyl analogs as controlled substances, but in 2019, alarmed by fentanyl abuse, China went one step ahead. And regulated a wide net of fentanyl-related substances. 
To date, no evidence of the illegal export of fentanyl-related substances has been uncovered in China.这种滥用这危害有了警醒 on December the 10th, 2019, Jim Carroll, the director of the United States Office of National Drug Control Policy, gave an interview to USA Today. He said while the direct flow of fentanyl from China to the United States has been greatly reduced, the amount of fentanyl flowing into the United States is the same as before and is coming from new places. This made it more important than ever for the authorities not to let down their guard. To make matters worse, there are concerns that drug users have simply found other ways to go under the radar through the dark web, an unregulated online platform where illegal activities thrive due to its highly anonymous nature. The difficulty of catching criminals who operate in the shadows of the dark web and the problem of illegal drug production, trafficking and consumption affect every country in the world. But a concerted global effort to tackle the crisis could be the solution. Unfortunately, the opportunity for China and the US to work together has been affected by a series of issues, including sanctions on Chinese organizations like the Institute of Forensic Science of China and the National Narcotics Laboratory. Instead of accepting responsibility for its own problems, once again the US preferred to shift the responsibility by claiming that fentanyl came from China. While the international community and China are increasingly strict in the control of fentanyl substances, the drug problem in the United States, especially the abuse of fentanyl and other synthetic opioids, is still serious and even getting worse. The number of deaths from drug overdoses in the US reached the highest level on record in 2021, according to a provisional data report released by the US CDC on May the 11th of 2022. Nearly 108,000 people died from drug overdoses in the US in 2021, and about two-thirds of those deaths involving fentanyl or other synthetic opioids, according to the report. That's about one American overdose death every five minutes. If you want to solve the fentanyl problem, the most important thing is to reduce the demand for the United States and the United States. If you want to solve the demand for the United States, one of the things that I learned in my 31-year career is that finger pointing does not solve any issue. But I have to applaud the Chinese government for everything that they're doing against this uh, opioid epidemic. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done between the United States and China. The war against the drugs is a tough battle. Everyone, from the person in the street to politicians, has to be committed to fight. And the best solutions are found when the world comes together in solidarity. <laughs>